Hello people, happy Sunday. Hi. No suit to cut off today. <laughs> Sorry about that, some of you watching. Didn't mean to cut you off. I have a habit of going around the back of the tripod because that's the only place that I can see what I'm actually looking, what you're looking at. And then I must have caught it as I went around the front of it. And so I knocked poor Sue off altogether. Cheers. It's not water by the way, it's elderflower cordial. I love it. Just been up to Tesco to do my normal weekly shop. And uh, had my mango and passion fruit cooler from Costa, which I absolutely adore. But they're very Moorish, I could eat them all, well, eat them. Well, you can practically eat them because they're full of ice, but you know what I mean, you could drink them all day. I have actually sewn one of the tops together, done the sleeve edgings, and I actually put a little row around the bottom to make it a tiny bit longer. Um, it is navy blue, this round the bottom, by the way, in case you're wondering, it's not black. So that's the green and there's two different shades of grey they're not showing up too well I don't know that's a paler grey and that's a, a deeper more like a school grey so I, feel, I sewed that one up together this one will be ready for going on Etsy as will the smaller one of the purple when I get round to sewing it together probably do that tonight while I'm watching TV this weekend's just got away from me as you probably saw from the little video I did just before this one um, the dressing room's coming along, apart from me breaking one of the doors, but I haven't broken it, it just once. You have to touch them with a very delicate hand, because they're very flimsy, and if you touch them a bit too roughly, they will fall apart. And, uh, obviously, delicate Annie here, you know, must have gone a bit <coughs> too enthusiastic when I opened it, and it came away in my hand. Uh, but the best of all was when I fell over. <laughs> that was so funny. It was funny. I just piled all the sweaters that you saw in my uh, canvas sort of wardrobe thing. I piled them all behind me, threw them all behind me while I was tidying them out because I needed to pull it out to get to the window because I was putting the curtains up. It wasn't so much for privacy because you couldn't actually see through it, but it, I thought it looked nicer from the outside seeing you know a pair of neck curtains rather than all the backs of all the units so i pulled all the sweaters out because of course i couldn't move the unit with all the sweaters in it because it was too heavy threw them all merrily behind me stepped back fell over bump right on the bottom luckily it had a very soft landing but because there were sweaters as i landed on them i compressed them all so i was practically sitting on the floor and I'm like a, to a turtle, tortoise, whatever you want to call it, on its back when I get down on the floor for any reason whatsoever. So I was sat there thinking, oh, you've got yourself in a merry pickle, haven't you? And I'm thinking, oh my giddy up, what do I do? So I'd landed with like one leg one side of a unit and one leg another side of the unit, very delicate, you know, it's good you're always on your own. Grace did say, "Is you know, why didn't you have your camera and video yourself? But there would have been a whole lot more of me on view than I would have liked to have anybody to have seen. Because I was like legs akimbo when I fell. <laughs> anyway, I managed to get both my legs together. So I'm looking around thinking, what, I'm going to pull myself up on? This is funny. This is a joke. Yeah. Because I can't kneel. So I can't go onto my knees and, and kneel. So I'm laying, sitting there. And eventually I'm going lower and lower and lower on this pile of sweaters because they're compressing more and more and more with my delicate little body pressing them down. So I'm practically laid down by this stage. <laughs> so I think this is fun, this is fun. How are you going to get up from here? Anyway, I had a sudden brainwave. So I bum walked or bottom walked, whichever you want to call it, over to the staircase. Dropped my legs over down the stairs and managed to hoist myself up with the help of a door frame and the top of the banister. Hooray! Success! So I won't do that again. But I do. I do it all the time. I do stupid things like that. Anyway, if you want to know where this pattern came from, it came from Inside Crochet and I think it's issue 90. Of course, I haven't got my glasses in the other room. That was the one. 
issue 90 still available on ebay i think or around and about may not be in the um, shops anymore because it's a couple of months two or three months old now but that's what it was in this pattern but if you're very very clever i mean you can sort of make your own up as you go along it's basically a circle as my friend called it which one was it i think mr denise called it a squirtle <laughs> it's a square and a circle it's a squirt anyway while i was in the supermarket i got the issue of simply crochet it's um issue 61 it's kind of got a couple of things in it i like but it's not that impressive really it came with a polymer crochet hook which is four millimeter i think it's a g if you're in the us and it came also with a little booklet called flower makes which is all um that's a bag with like a flower petal on it that's a scarf the flowers stitched on it and uh, I think that's more or less it I presume that scarf pattern's in there somewhere the one with all the circles I presume that's in there somewhere so anyway this was what was in the Simply Crochet I always think the adverts look much more enticing don't they, than what's actually in it that's Wensleydale Yarns. Wensleydale Gems. Um, it's the West Yorkshire Spinners. 20 stunning shades of 100% Wensleydale double knitting. So I presume it's wool. I'm not sure, but I presume it's wool. Right, and that's King Cole Luxury Merino. Ooh. Looks very, very nice, but probably way too expensive for me to um you know to buy to sell on if you know what i'm saying uh visitors at the autumn fair third to sixth of september at the birmingham nec so i don't think i'll be going there but that's where they're going to be and then this one's talking about learn tunisian crochet it's advertising a book i think which is a tunisian crochet workshop if you buy this and you quote a little quote, you get uh, five pound off the price. So instead of paying sixteen ninety nine, you'd be paying eleven pound ninety nine for this book. Right, let's have a little look at what else is in here. Now, I a I don't wear shorts, and b I don't think I'd want powder in on the side of my shorts. Nor would I want to walk around with is it boo or boom on my head, but maybe the younger ones would. Oh, it's boom, I think. Yeah, boom. A pair of lips on a chain round my neck. And I could put down bam and wham on my white trainers if I had any. <laughs> I think they're meant for some people slightly younger than I am. There's some crochet braces. And I'm not sure what that's meant to be, but it just says OMG. I presume it's a patch to put on something, but not for I. That's a rug, it's done in hemp, but I presume if you bought all those colours of hemp, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six colours of hemp. So I would imagine it'd be quite an expensive rug to crochet. This one is done in gradient yarn. But they must have worked very hard to get those, you know, the colours to go like that without any breaks in it. Um, it says use one ball for the front squares and one ball for the back squares. It's sheep sheepjes or shape shages, whatever it's called, and it's the whirl, and you need two cakes of lavender, delicious. So I don't know quite how they managed to make it look so uniform. I'm sure it wouldn't if I was doing it. <laughs> Sleepy sloth, for those of you who are into amigurumis. I hope it, that the light's not shining on it. I hope you're getting to see this. It's any trouble with having a camera where you can't see 
I can't see what you can see because people said put a mirror behind it but I haven't really got anywhere to put a mirror behind it. You know, one of these days I'll get a camera that shows me, you know, with a twist thing that shows me what you can see. Uh, that's a cowl. It's done all in uh, circles. Now, you know me. I like that. <laughs> it's done in pure wool, but I wouldn't do it in pure wool, of course. To do it in pure wool would be expensive because it's like, for my size, it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 1400 gram balls in wool. So that would be quite a lot of money, wouldn't it, if it was 100% British wool. So much as I like it, I would be doing mine in acrylic. Um, that's a very small shawl, scarf. Necklet, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's a, an article on Frank and Olive. She's a designer. I think she mostly designs children's wear. And nostalgic stitches. Inevitable poncho. Which I've yet to make myself one. I bought myself a fabric bomb when it was in fashion donkeys years ago. My son commandeered it when he was tiny and he used to wear my big platform boots and he used to be doing Clint Eastwood, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. <laughs> he loved wearing his poncho. That's, um, didn't wear it in the street, I might have hastened to have, we're just talking play. Just in case you know my son. <laughs> No, he, you know, like people pay cowboys and Indians when he was always Clint Eastwood. That's the waffle stitch. You can use the waffle stitch for a basket or a, a chair cover. These are just talking about new season yarns. They'll all be. They're usually quite expensive yarns. <laughs> that I usually look at and think, mm -mm, can't afford. Put them down. But I know a lot of you don't mind paying for the yarns. Maybe I would if it was just for me and I was only making one every now and again. But. I don't think my customers would pay any more than what I charge you know some of them seem to faint over when i tell them how much things are that's what's going to be in next you know as i said before i always get asked would you make them in merino or would you make them in fine yarn yes i will but you're not going to get them for 40 pound and then it's like oh how much would they be probably about £80 because it would take me twice as long to do them. The yarn is twice as, <laughs> as expensive. So yes, that's how much they would cost. And then I get the, thank you very much, but do thank you. You know, so that's why I don't use fine yarn. And that's why I don't use things like merino or alpaca because people are just not prepared to pay. And I'm not prepared to have them sitting in my stash of finished garments forever and a day. In an ideal world, of course. <laughs> Cheers. Yesterday I went to a family reunion. One of my cousins was coming up um, to visit her sister. And I hadn't seen her since before she got married. And she got married way before me. I was married in 68. And my cousin Sheila was married way before then. And uh, I hadn't seen her since. I walked in the room and somebody said to this lady, you recognise her? And she goes, yes, I do recognise her, even though I haven't seen her since she was a little girl. And I'm thinking, who is it? Who is it? And then somebody said Sheila, and I thought, oh, <laughs> my cousin Sheila, I would never have recognised her. I mean, when you see somebody in their, in their 20s and then the next time you see them, they're in their 80s, you know, it's a, 
<laughs> kind of a bit of a difference, yeah. But it was nice to meet up with family when it wasn't a funeral, if you know what I'm saying. There wasn't a whole lot of us there. There was a, you know, a bunch of cousins and things. Well, that's all that's left. All the aunties and the uncles have all long since passed. All the clan, the Butterworth clan have all gone now. It's just left to us second generation. <laughs> I think one of them is still called Butterworth. The rest of us have all got married out, haven't we? So we've all got different surnames. But I was never a Butterworth anyway. I was always a Buckley, because that was my dad's name. It was my mum that was the bottom. But it was nice. We had, she made curry, I think it was chicken curry she'd made and she'd made potato ash. Um, potato ash is like a kind of a northern dish, you probably call it something different. It's potatoes, onions and meat, like boiled in a pan, uh, like a stew. There's onions in it I think and there's carrots in it and we usually eat it with red cabbage. Um, or beat it whichever way round. Um, she'd done garlic bread and so she'd done rice and rice with this um, curry, and she'd also done some chips with, to use with the curry or with whatever. I just had a small plate because it was lunchtime, and I'd, I don't eat a tremendous amount at lunchtime, so I just had a small plate of this potato ash. Hash, sorry, not ash. Ash makes it sound like it's burnt to a cinder, doesn't it? No, it was potato hash. And uh, I just had a small plate of that, so I was quite happy with that. And, um, you know, it was like, what would you like to drink? Well, I'll have uh, orange squash or whatever. Are you sure? Don't want wine? Nope, don't want wine. And everybody else has got a, a beer, a cider or whatever and that. And I'm there with me, orange squash. I'm quite happy. You know, people sort of think, are you teetotal? No, I'm not teetotal, I will have a drink. But um, I'm not a big drinker anymore. I just like an odd drink on an odd occasion. But I'm not really a wine drinker anymore. Um, because good wine is wasted on me, because to me sometimes it tastes a bit like vinegar. I've not got the connoisseur's taste for wine. <laughs> so it's a bit insulting when you have a drink of white wine and you go, Oh, that's a bit tart. <laughs> so I tend when I'm out in public just to uh, stick with Coca-Cola or whatever they've got. Water if they haven't got anything else, you know, or some orange cordial, something like that. Anything like that does me fine. It's like this, this is the, el the elderflower cordial. It looks like water, but it's actually got a very, very faint colour to it. I've got another one, but I haven't opened it yet. It's elderflower and rose, and that's quite nice, but it's a bit sweeter than this. It's quite expensive cordial, actually, you know, compared with what you can pay for a bottle of just ordinary orange squash. But I do think, you know, I don't, I'm on my own. I'm not drinking gallons of the stuff. I haven't got kids, you know, drinking it all the time, so... If you think about it, even though it's quite, well, it's more expensive than cordial is, um, when you've diluted it out, it doesn't work out that much per glass. When you consider I've just paid £3.25 for the mango and passion fruit cooler. So that's quite cheap compared, really. <laughs> so I haven't got all that else to tell you, really. Um, I'm still trying to catch up on other people's videos. And if you're watching Claudia, thanks very much for the shout out. I did watch your video, but I haven't put a comment on it because I was watching it on the TV. She was talking about the Doris Chan, you know, the all show pattern, which uh, both myself and Sue uh, and I think Kelly's done. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. That's what she was talking about. And it is a very, very good pattern. And it goes into lots and lots of detail, shows you how to make it in about four different ways. So if you want to start your first Norris Charm pattern, then start with the All Show, because it's one of her simplest. And uh, like I say, she's, it's about 12 pages long and it's free and she's, you know, it's a very, very nice pattern. I must have made quite a lot in my time. <laughs> Whenever I was asked to make something for a raffle prize, you know, I used to think, mm, I'll do an All Show because I can rustle one of those up quite quickly. And uh, I've done them in like different shades, you know, like graded shades. Before gradient yarn came out, I would choose my graded shades to, to do it with, yeah. 
and they always went down well for raffle prizes and uh, you know donations like to all people's homes and things like that because they're like a they're not a half circle they're more like a wedge they come round like that shape and they stay on shoulders you know that somebody elderly they don't have to keep doing this business to pull the shawl back on their shoulders you put it on and it it stays where it's put yeah. so it's very very handy for anybody who's in a wheelchair or anybody who's bedridden or in an old people's home where they sit in a chair for a long period of time very very handy very nice pattern very quickly to do so you're thinking of your christmas presents i know said that dreadful word didn't i christmas presents i mean kim um i'm just trying to think of her name on youtube Kim, I forgot your name on YouTube. She's Kim Banner anyway on Facebook. <laughs> Kim, if you're watching, put your name in the comments. Um, she was talking about Christmas, starting making her Christmas presents. Kim makes the most fantastic amigurumis. Really, she does. And um, as well as Karen, Karen Hale's Casalistic. I mean, I don't like making them myself. I really don't. I mean, Rose, Rose Sidiaki, she is the queen of <laughs> making hamigurumis, but uh, mine turn out like freaks of Frankenstein whenever I make them. I stuff them wrong, they all have twisted limbs, and as for embroidering the features, then they do all look like Frankenstein's monster. I don't have the knack. You know, over the time I finished putting the face on, pulling the face off, putting the face on, pulling the face off. And wishing I'd stayed with the first one because it was the best of all the embroidered things I did in the, you know. Uh, those of you who make amigurumis, I take my hat off to you all. Because I can't do them. Well, I can. I can do all the bits. But I would need a stitcher upper. And a stuffer. And definitely a face putter on it. But I'm not, sh I need to carry on going with Ephraim's sweater that I put down while I was making these. So, but you know when the mood kind of goes off you when you're doing something. And you kind of, I mean I will pick it up again, I will do it. But you know when the mood kind of goes off you a little bit for what you're doing. And you lose that initial enthusiasm. And I find it difficult to find the crojo again for that certain thing until I leave, unless I leave it and then go back to it. So I haven't decided what I'm going to crochet next. Too much choice, too many things and in actual fact I shouldn't be crocheting, I should actually be getting finished with that craft room. It's got to the stage where it wouldn't take that long now to get it finished, it's just a question of reorganising and tidying and putting that shelf up, the one that's broken. It's not broken, it's just that the outside walls of the shelving unit have moved slightly. So the little pegs that hold the shelf don't hold the shelf. So I need to put some screws, you know, to stick out more to hold the shelf so it doesn't fall straight down. And then I've got to put all my patterns into some more folders. I've got lots and lots and lots of loose patterns that have never made it into the folders. And it's so much easier to locate them if they're in folders because at least you've got an idea where you're looking, you know. Whereas I have to go <laughs> through all my patterns until I find the right one. Because the modern patterns I bought recently, I haven't even made it as far as any. Um. And then I've got to tidy up the rest of it in here, get somebody to help me to move these two white units that are there, upstairs. Yes, in that elasticated room with the <laughs> elasticated sides. Um, so I've still got quite a few things to do. So Sue's coming sometime this week, but I don't quite know when. Um, so I've still got quite a few YouTube videos to watch. I tend to watch them a little bit on the TV, but the problem with that is I can't put a comment on. So, you know, I have been watching a lot of people, but not putting comments on anything. I have to go back onto my PC uh, to put a comment on. And I haven't even switched my PC on today, which is wonderful considering it's I don't know what time it is can't see a clock um, probably about four o'clock in the afternoon I think by now 
When he retired, you've no sense of time or date. I usually have to, when I go into the supermarket, I usually have to go buy the newspapers. Not because I'm going to buy one, but because I have a look to see what date it is. <laughs> That's purely because when you're buying things, you want to know how long dated they are, you know. Obviously, things like vegetables, I don't really go by that. You know, they're still looking fresh and, you know, I'm not going to throw away tomatoes just because it says they're past the sell-by date. They look nice, firm, eatable. But, you know, you tend to... I was, I'm a bit more careful with things like chicken and stuff. Um, you know, edibles are, are perishables. I'm a bit more cautious about that. Things like meat, if I'm not going to use them right away, I put them in the freezer as soon as I come home. But the trouble with that is I forget to take them out again. You know, I think to myself, oh, I was going to make sure to do with that lamb. Where's the lamb? Oh, it's in the freezer. <laughs> and I won't defrost anything in the microwave. I don't know why I've got this dread of it not being defrosted properly and having food poisoning or something. So, anyway, that's me talking about nothing, isn't it, again, which I'm quite good at. I've got a degree in talking about rubbish, do you know that? Didn't know that, did he? Very good at waffling, as my dad used to say. Or prattling, as another of his words. Will you stop prattling? <laughs> that means rabbiting on about nothing. We you stop prattling? What are you talking about? Shush. I mean, I did have a lovely boyfriend one time, and he was, um, he drove a lorry. Sometimes I would go with him, unofficially, of course. Which is why I'm not mentioning his name. Because <laughs> he may still work for the same company. And, um, you know, we'd be driving along and I'd be... Because I wouldn't have seen him for a few days. And then he'd go, Jan. So what he say? Can we have a bit of hush? Just a bit of hush. So then I'd start doing my knitting or whatever. And read a book or something. And then after about half hour he'd say, I said a little bit of hush. I didn't say silence. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always been a talker. My mother said I came out of the womb talking. And singing and dancing, that was another one. I was always dancing when I was little, always doing something. That's why she put me into ballet and everything when I was so small. Because I was always dancing and singing. Not got a voice, but I was singing. I mean, I absolutely enjoy singing. I mean, there was a period of time when there was no one in next door for quite a number of months. It was great. I could put my music on, you know, and have a little sing song. It was great, you know. Won't do it now, of course. <laughs> I have to sing under my breath or mime. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting Thursday yet again. I don't know why I'm so thirsty. And my dress is covered in dribbles because... As I was coming home on my scooter, I was holding my um, cooler in one hand. You know, those plastic things with the straw sticking out. And every time we went over the bump, of course, a bit of this orange stuff, mango stuff, splattered all over my dress. So as usual, I can't keep a dress on for more than a few hours without it looking like a four-course meal has gone down the front of it. We all have our little drawbacks. Mine is usually my bosom when I'm eating my porridge in the morning. I would never get dressed before I eat my breakfast because when I eat my porridge, my crumb catcher catches porridge. So, you know, I always have my breakfast, porridge or whatever, toast before I have a shower because otherwise it's all down the front of me. I need one of those bibs, you know, with a turn upon them. <laughs> crumb catcher <laughs> anyway I'll speak to you again during the week and hopefully I will have a little bit more done on this craft room because it's lingering on far too long now I want it finished because my daughter-in-law has promised me that um, she will come and do the painting on the um, stairs and I think she's doing my bedroom as well so I'll look a bit more finished then bit more together as they say there's a lot more places I'd like painting but they'll have to wait they're not desperate for painting it's just that you when you've done something you like to refresh you know the paintwork if it's been done for a few years don't you 
just give it a fresh lick over. I can do a bit of it, but I can't do ladders, you see. So I can't reach up. I've tried rollers on stalks, but they don't they don't cut it. They don't they're a bit too slap happy, aren't they? They don't like make a nice edge in anywhere, do they? You know, if you're going up to the top and there's a different colour, like where the ceiling is, you can't go slap happy. You could if you put masking tape, but to put masking tape up you have to go up a ladder, don't you? You don't realise, do you, how much you need a little ladder? Even if you've got a small house and it's not got high ceilings, you still need a little ladder. And I fall over, as you've, as you've, I've told you, I fall over on my own. I just fell over a sweater. <laughs> That's all I fell. Just put, went, step backwards, got my foot caught in a sweater, and I went boom, backwards. I think I would fall over an eyelash if you left it on the ground for me. I'm hopeless. Never mind, I've said I'm going and this time I really am. So enjoy your Sunday if you're watching this on a Sunday and enjoy the coming week and I will be with you later in the week. So bye for now. Bye.